Welcome back to the channel guys. Several weeks ago, I had a 25,000 subscriber giveaway and I gave away five watches. And there was a Spinnaker, there was an AV8 in there and no sooner did I give those watches away that Spinnaker and AV8 has sent me another two watches. And that makes me happy because when I get watches like this, not only do I get to review them, play with them, I get to use them but I also get to give them away for you guys as well. So, you know, as they're coming up to 30,000, 35,000 subscribers, whenever I get watches, I get to give them away to you guys. I pick and choose. Sometimes I might keep one or two, but the majority of the times I give them away, which is pretty cool. So it's a win-win. It's a win for me, it's a win for you. But this watch here is, is pretty special, for me anyway, because I don't know if you noticed, but there's an actual dome crystal, a sapphire crystal, and it's very, very thick. This is a specifically designed watch. It's a, it's a watch that draws its inspiration from the 1960s because not many people know that Rolex actually designed a watch very similar and that particular watch broke a historical record. In fact, there was seven prototypes that Rolex designed that went to the deepest part of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, back in the 1960s. Jacques Picard with the Bathyscape Trieste alongside the US Navy basically went down to the deepest part of the ocean and a Rolex, a watch that looked very similar to this was mounted onto that vessel and it survived. It came back up and it was still ticking. So this thing is drawing its inspiration from that particular period. And I, I tell you what, I'm gonna link at the bottom of this video, in the description section, I'm gonna link a video. I encourage you guys, we, we, we watch nerds, we're watchaholics, I encourage you guys to watch that video because it's quite instructional and fantastic history. Really cool story and really cool time pieces. But this thing here, what we have, in fact, what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to review both these watches. This is Spinnaker, this is the sister company AV8, completely different beasts. This one here is designed for a purpose and like I said, drawing its inspiration from that period. And being a diver, being a deep, 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 deep sea diver. And this one here is basically a pilot style watch. So what I'll do, let's put that aside. We're gonna check this one out first. And as you can see, very difficult to photograph with that dome crystal, but it's a quirky, fun, funky style watch. And I like what it stands for. I like the fact that it, it drew its inspiration from that deep sea dive. So what we have here, guys, it's, it's a Spinnaker. It's called the Picard. This particular one here is the Volcanic Black. There's three different colorways. There's a green, a blue, and a black. Now, the, I'm gonna tell you straight out, the weight of the watch comes in at 228 grams sized to my 18 centimeter wrist. So it's a hefty watch. You know it's on your wrist. It's, it pretty much looks bulletproof. It's a, it's a beast, it's a monster. And it fits on my wrist being an 18 centimeter, but as you can see, the, the distortion you're getting from that crystal the depth of it is it's incredible i like watches like this i really do you know it, it's different it's a different type of beast yeah just some fun just something different and fun in our horology but this is an interesting piece and i'll tell you what it's built rock solid almost bulletproof everything on it is machined and feels it feels the business and i'm i'm going to share that with you guys now the dimensions of the watch I measure the case height at 20.9 millimeters or 21 mil. The case diameter comes in at 45 mil. The lug to lug distance is 51.8 millimeters and the lug width of 22 mil. And if you look at that bracelet, that bracelet tapers from 22 mil down to 19.8. It's got a nice milled clasp. We can lock it in there. It's got a flip lock as well as twin triggers to be able to release it. So very secure but they also offer a diver's extension. And if you look at the side of the case, it also has a helium escape valve. So it's thick, it's chunky, it's solid. You could probably attach this thing on the outside of a submarine and go down and it surface and it'd still be ticking. It feels, it feels like one of those types of watches. Now, if you look at the crown on this watch, that is absolutely spectacular. That crown is 9.4 millimeters, machined, meticulously machined. It's signed, as you can see, it's beautiful. It is so nice to unwind, it pops out. We can hack the movement, if you can have a look in there, and we can adjust the time. It features an NH35 movement in here, very uh, solid and reliable. 
the hand winding experience again is beautiful but the the latch down experience is so so nice so solid it it really does feel good guys it does feel so nice and and solid in the hand there's I'm enjoying the experience of this watch because it's not a toy. It's actually built like an intended solid machine. Now, if we look at the bezel on this watch, it's a 120 click unidirectional ceramic insert, very stealth, and it's got a loom triangle, inverted triangle at the top. So let's check out its action. That is that is excellent. There's a springing effect, as you notice, as you, as you move the actual bezel, it moves, you let go and it, 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 it pops back, but with a solid pop. So I don't know if you can see it. Very hard to see, but it is so solid. There's no, there's no back plate. It doesn't move. It does not move and accuracy, perfect. Spot on. I don't know if you can see that in there. Very hard to photograph. Like I said, this crystal, what, what I'm seeing and what you're seeing are two different things on camera. It's, it's hard to do, but in the flesh, I can see what I'm doing in here. So just thought I'd share, I'd mention that. But the, the bezel itself with its knurling, extremely easy to grip, very nice action. Again, that crown, that bezel, very, very nice. Really well made. The sapphire dome crystal on this is amazing. It really is, guys. Like, like I said, this is a, not meant to be taken as a serious watch. Oh, we're gonna use it on a daily basis as a watch per se but I like what it stands for. I like the fact that it's, it's drawn in its inspiration from that particular dive back in the 60s. Now, as far as the design goes, is it a ripoff of that Rolex back in the 60s? Um, for me, look, I'll say no, it's not a one-to-one. -one. It actually, it, it, I know it draws a lot of its inspiration, a lot of the, the ideas from it, but as far as being a one-to-one yeah, -one replica, definitely not. Now, the Loom, as you can see, Super Luminova, very good, beautifully applied evenly. It goes, it goes, it goes, it lasts, it lasts. Fantastic. So everything about this watch is rock solid. The the finishing, the case. I mean, there are gripes that I have. If you were to wear this as a daily, obviously there's dislikes that I don't like about this watch. Number one, you can't you can't really see the time at first glance. Outdoors, indoors, if you're in the sun. There's, there's great legibility because that lens or that, that crystal seems to act like a lens. So you really need to get the light to penetrate through to that doll so you can see what you're doing. But if you're in the shade or if you're in varying lighting, it's going to pick up reflections everywhere. That crystal, although it's quirky, funky and very nice you know, in a fun way, it also is its biggest negative as far as what you can and cannot see. Second negative is that bracelet. There's a couple of things that I found about this bracelet on this watch. Number one, if you look underneath, there's actually arrows. You know when you've got, there you go, see those arrows? They point to the direction of which you should be pulling out the split pins. And on this particular unit, I don't know if they've made an error, but they're pointing in the direction of which you should be inserting the split pin. And I only found that out by mistake because I went to pull the split pin out this way and I literally almost destroyed the thing. And when I went to put the other ones back in again, you gotta put them in on this side, opposite to what I'm normally used to with watches. So that's that's a that's either a flaw or something that, uh, an oversight, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that for you guys. Another negative or dislike, it is the weight coming in at 228 grams, but again, it comes part and parcel with the design. The fact that the lug to lug distance is quite large, it comes in at 51.8 or 52 mil, but the bracelet doesn't, see, even though it's got female end links, it doesn't seem to, you know, be able to drop down. So be, be aware of that, that it is a big hefty watch, but it's a specific type of watch drawing its inspiration. It's, there's a purpose that this thing was built. Now, the likes of the watch, it's fun. It's really, really well made. Like it's really well made. Like I can't stress enough on how well built this timepiece is and how not only just solid, but really meticulously finely machined from that bezel, from that crown. It really is lovely. It's a top, top unit. The, the action on, on everything is fantastic. It, there's an enjoyment factor. There really is an enjoyment factor on this watch. So if you're looking for uh, CNC machining in a really top level, here it is. It's on this watch. And lastly, 
it's strangely i don't know very cool it's a very cool piece it's a it's a talking piece it's a conversation starter which i really love so but getting away from this guys let's have a look at the av8 the sister company this is the spitfire smith automatic this thing comes in many different colorways as well so check out their website the one I've got here has got a vintage sort of hue, very good legibility. I'll give you its dimensions. The case diameter comes in at 42 millimeters. The case height I measure at 13.9 millimeters. The lug to lug distance is 50 mil and a lug width of 22 mil. Now the weight of the watch comes in at 77 grams on this leather strap. And that crown is a 7.1 millimeter non-screw down. Now, it also features the same movement as the other watch we saw in the Spinnaker, NH35. A simple two clicks, we hack the movement, we can adjust the time, lock it in. As you can see, being a pilot style watch, it's designed for legibility. Very clear, very clean. As you look at the back, we've got a custom designed rotor of the aeroplane, the Spitfire. The back crystal on this is a mineral glass. I've tested it, it's mineral, the front is sapphire. Now speaking of that sapphire crystal, it's a single dome sapphire, so there is a little bit of distortion at extreme edges as you can see, but it also has quite a few coatings of blue anti-reflective coating, which to me, I don't really like. I think the anti-reflective coating, I see it more than I should, and I'd like to pretty much more see the dial rather than the coating, so that's one of my negatives of this watch. The leather strap itself is quite nice, a bit of stitching, bolstering as you can see, AV8, genuine leather, very comfortable on the wrist. As you can see, 42 mil watch sits not a problem on my 18 centimeter wrist. That height coming at 13.9, again, not an issue. The only thing, the lug to lug distance being at 50 mil is quite large, bear that in mind. But legibility wise, very nice, very easy to read the time on this watch. Now the loom on this, again, Swiss Super Luminova. It's easy to read, very legible, but it doesn't last. It really does not last. If I was to compare it to the Picard, this thing here goes and goes, this one doesn't. This one here doesn't last at all. Now, what are the potential negatives of this particular watch? That anti-reflective coating, again, I see it way too often. I, I see it more than I should, and that's, that's one of the biggest gripes I have of this particular unit. The sapphire crystal does present, being a, a single dome, does present a bit of distortion. Be aware of that. Not that it really matters because you have to be at extreme angles. Any other angle that you're viewing this watch, you won't have an issue. The build quality is quite good, but it's not on par with the Spinnaker. This thing here is a completely different level. From the machining, the, the tolerances is so much better than this, but completely different beast. You know, it's really unfair to compare these two watches together. You know, even though one's a sister brand, this thing here is designed for a particular purpose. This is for a different purpose altogether. Now the price of these watches, guys, the Spinnaker comes in at 550 US dollars with a two year warranty. There's quite a few variants, a green, a blue, and a black. I've got the black here. And the AV8 comes in at 330 US dollars. And again, there's a few different colorways. So I encourage you guys get on their website, but even more so with this watch here, like I said, there's a link at the end of this video. Check it out. I think it, it's a good educational video for 20 minutes. If you've got the time, watch it. I really do recommend it. But guys, let me know your thoughts of these watches. A beast, a bulletproof monster. It is, it's, it's wonderful. I like, I like getting different things on the channel, guys, for me, but also for you. But let me know your thoughts on these watches, especially this. Uh, yeah, it, I wanted to get it on to see what it feels like in the flesh, what it looks like. Totally surprised me as far as its build quality, as far as its tolerances and machining brilliant very very nice so thanks again for watching and we'll see you all in the next video